What's up folks, Chito Fahadans here and in this episode of Anamorphic on a Budget we're gonna be talking about the much anticipated Rectal Lux. Uh, first off, I'm planning more tests than the ones I'm showing here because this lens is just blowing me away. And as of 2015 the Rectal Lux is a new product on the Anamorphic market entirely designed and developed by Mr. John Barlow. It is based on the variable strength diopter which, in a simplified way, translates into transforming any lens into a single focus system. The Rectilux currently comes in two versions, the 3FF W, which is this one, for bigger anamorphic adapters, such as the Koa, uh, Bell & Howell, the Rectemoscope, the Hypergoners, Cinelux, and so, and the 3FF S, for smaller adapters, such as Isco Animax, and uh, Sanker 16C, the Molar 32, you know. Uh, if you want to see a full compatibility list, there's a link on my blog. The lens has a full metal body and it feels like a tank. Well, it certainly weights as one, with uh, 450 grams by itself and around 700 grams with the Koa fitted inside. So, uh, focus is so smooth that it took me a couple of hours to get used to it. But now I think it's great because I can just use my fingers to rotate. The uh, front thread is 95 millimeters and the rectic grip on the back is 67 millimeters. So be sure to get all the proper step rings. How does it work? First you need your taking lens and your anamorphic adapter. Check the compatibility list to get the proper version of the Rectilux. And the anamorphic is focused to infinity and then it's fitted inside the Rectilux here. Uh, watch my assembly video to see a step-by-step -step of this process with the Koa b &H. and afterwards you focus your taking lens to infinity and screw it back here onto the Recti grip and then that's it the name Rectilux comes from a mix of Latin words for straight and light which means the light goes straight through the adapter uh, not being subject to any changing like chromatic aberration, loss of sharpness, blooming that kind of thing no extra artifacts are added by the Rectilux. This means that uh, testing this with a core fitted inside would be exactly like uh, having a single focus core. Makes sense, right? An exception to this test is that I'm using Zeiss taking lenses instead of my regular Russian primes because they would cap the quality of the Rectilux. Later on, I'll shoot more tests using Canon's 5885 f1.2 and the 135 f2 uh, just for some extreme uh, evaluation like how sharp it is at f1.2 that should be fun and now back to regular talk focus ranges from half a meter to infinity the stretch depends on the anamorphic fitted inside all of the adapters compatible have a two times stretch factor except the bullex molar which is 1.5 and alignment is set using the recti grip you loosen this tiny screw here and are able to rotate the anamorphic as you see fit this is very different from the traditional three nylon screws it uses a single bolt Triple check if it's secured because the bolt is very tiny so I once almost dropped it because I didn't check properly. For this first batch a bunch of us placed our orders so the lenses could be made and now John still has a few in stock so there's no waiting time except for shipping. Price is £695 for the 3FFW and £549 for the 3FFS. That translates roughly to 1100 bucks and 850 bucks which is slightly more expensive than the focus module and for information on how to place an order visit Rectilux's website in theory this test is just showing the performance of the Coal Bell and how it paired with the Zeiss since the Rectilux isn't affecting quality at all as usual you can download the original files from my blog um, with focus ranging from half a meter to infinity the 95 front thread doesn't worry me so much because I would need a very unusual and specific shot to be closer than half a meter from my subject. The test also made me realize that f1.4 can be sharp enough and usable. Flares. Well, it's the Coas flares, nothing special there. The light I used isn't the best. It's a tiny LED. If I shot the same thing without the Rectilux, the flares would be the same. Now we got to an interesting point. Uh, using two times stretch lenses would give you a 3.56 to 1 aspect ratio and 
almost none of us use this kind of image. So I cropped everything to 2.4 to 1 uh, Cinemascope. In my tests, using the Helios 44 at 58mm still gives me some black edges. John told me that the Elnicor uh, 63mm f2.8 is the widest available taking lens out there, shooting 1600 by 1200 with Magic Lantern on it, 5D3. Unfortunately, my copy hasn't arrived yet, so I can't show it, but I have no reason not to trust John's words about it. I had to do this uh, kind of in a hurry because the Zeiss were rented for half a day and I had to return them in the following morning. I thank Gearhouse Camera Rentals here in Vancouver for the good deal they offered me in favor of this project. Uh, here's the 2.421 version of the shots, but you can also check this other video for the full 3.56 to 1 aspect ratio of them. For me, the hardest thing shooting these images was using my camera rig, which was too small and uncomfortable. The practicality of using the Rectilux also impressed me, being able to quickly switch between different taking lenses and not to worry about double focus or diopters at all. This video has already overextended itself and it's time to end it. The Rectilux is an amazing piece of gear and a welcome addition to my anamorphic arsenal. It performs as expected and it breathes life back into the Koa b and So much it makes me consider buying other double focus lenses just to pair it with. True anamorphic, here we go. Ferdinand signing out. Well, of course, you should subscribe and check out my blog. This is a growing resource for all anamorphic shooters out there.